How often are you seeing people that have kind of autoimmune forms of arthritis in the, in the foot and ankle? It's a smaller percentage of my patient base, but they do make their way into my office. And a lot of the times where I will see that is more at the midfoot, where they'll have a lot of this arthritic change at the midfoot. And aside from obviously the medical management of that with, you know, pharmacologic agents, what are the most important things you're doing for those patients to foster midfoot mobility and strength? Again, we're meeting patients where they are. You'd be surprised, even patients that have had three and four foot surgeries, because that's typically what I will see. Little things like um, toe yoga, right? So being able to lift the big toe only, lift the four toes, lift all the toes and spread them. All of those little things are sending information to your brain that these people haven't seen in a very long period of time, if ever. So with midfoot um, issues, isometrics, if I can get a little bit, even a little bit of isometric activity out of them, we're doing it. We're going to talk about falls in a second and that we can use toe strength, which is part of the, you know, the reverse of some of those things you just talked about. Is toe strength mostly a midfoot intrinsic capacity? Um, well, flexor digitorum brevis is a big muscle in regards to toe strength. Okay. Um, when we do one of the videos, I'll talk about the wink sign. Okay. Okay. Cause that's a, a sign you can see in the toes to know you're engaging the muscle appropriately. Okay. Um, that like forward leaning, we want to be able to feel the intrinsic muscles of the foot. So feel the arch. Um, a lot of that helps these patients with this midfoot instability, you know, the intrinsic muscles of the foot, you know, when people do like uh, the short foot exercise, okay, I kind of call it the clamshell of the foot because it's a good place to start, but it's not uh, functional because the intrinsic muscles of the foot come into play when the heel comes off the ground at forward propulsion, when those toes need to be strong, right? I mean, if I was treating you for hip pain and I gave you, I want you to lay on your side and do clamshells forever. I mean, great. But is it functional? Do you ever do that? Right. So we have to marry these um, treatment plans with function. And I think especially with toe strength, you got to really work on that type of, you know, movement and tissue strength. So let's now go from toe strength back to falls, since you said that the measurement of toe strength is one of the greatest predictors of fall risk. Um, it's a huge problem. Yes. The mortality is enormous once you reach the age of about 65. Um, so what do you think are the most important things that we need to be training to minimize the risk of a fall? First and foremost, toe strength. That is the single biggest predictor of falls in the elderly is a weakness Amazing. in toe strength. It really is. I would is. not have guessed that. In when we get in and start doing these exercises, I mean, I think it is an imperative. You know how kids get scoliosis checks? I mean, we should be checking kids' feet. That, that's when we need to start paying attention to this stuff. Because if we start training these things, once we get to this age where toe strength is a massive deficit, we'll be ready for it. So toe strength for certain. I, I'm very worried about what my toe strength is going to be when we, <laughs> when we bust out the, uh, the dynamometer. Well, neuroplasticity is a real thing, so we can train that up for you. Very good. Um, so toe strength, um, ankle mobility. That's another one that we'll and look at. more important in the plantar dorsi plane or in the inversion, eversion plane? In both. So when I assess, um, you know, I have a fall prevention protocol. Dr. Tommy showed has put together an excellent fall prevention protocol. Um, and him and I have worked a lot together on this. So we'll look at... Um, ankle dorsiflexion. So we want that to be about 35 degrees, but then we'll also look at inversion and eversion, which okay. is basically going in and then going back out again. Um, a lot of the receptors on the foot live on this outside lateral aspect of the foot. So we talked about how a lot of falls occur with the initiation of gait. The other plane where people will fall is to the outside. Mm. So when they go to step, 
if I have less um, sensitivity to these receptors on the outside of the foot, I can't feel where am I going? I'm going to the outside. Mm -hmm. So that's why we'll look at the ability of the ankle. Do I have good range of motion both in and out and going forward? The other thing, obviously, that we'll look at is balance. Um, really cool studies looking at vestibular um, function, modulating activity of abductor halysis. So remember, that's the muscle that straightens the big toe. Abductor halysis is slow twitch muscle fibers. So that guy's not real good at movement coordination per se, but he can last all day. Yeah. And from a balanced perspective, it's the... Um, muscles that, you know, are receptors that can really hold our bodies up. And that abductor halysis is a big boy. So we look at single leg balance, for example. We also want to look up the chain. So when we look at fall prevention, it's how stable are my hips? When my foot is on the ground, it's my glute, right? When I go to heel strike, that guy is in charge. So I want to make sure I have good capacity going up into the chain. And how much of that is the glute med versus max? Depends on where we are in the gait cycle. So when I'm walking at heel strike, that's all glute max. Okay. P I think people As you think start to propel, you need the med to stabilize. And what do you externally, at this point, you need to be able to abduct the hip, right? Yeah. So... I'm walking, I heel strike. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have, think of it as a skewer. So I have gravity at heel strike that's causing everything to internally rotate. It's my glute max that is a very big controller of torque. He's going to slow things down coming from the hip. Once I get into midfoot stance or loading, now I need to make sure that I'm not swaying all over the place. That's glute med. So all of those tissues come into play to help stabilize my body and slow everything down. My boys are so obsessed with talking about butts right now <laughs> that over the weekend in some lame attempt to shut them up, I said, guys, the butt can be better described as the gluteus maximus and it's the largest muscle in the body if you want a little fun fact. <laughs> which now turns into them running around the house screaming gluteus maximus, gluteus maximus. And I'm like, I don't think it's I a good have, father right there. I, I'm like, I don't know that I've done any better here. This is just as annoying. Um, and I, I pity their teachers. Well, I mean, if you think about it, cause I'll have patients that do this, right? Because they'll think that, you know, when I'm walking, I'm going to like, you know, it's going to be this big old glute exercise. And as they go to push off, they'll squeeze their butt. And I'm like, it's the wrong spot. Mm. You want to squeeze your butt. You want to try to control it, right? And I really don't ever give people gait cues when they're walking because it's just too difficult. But that's not when you're pushing off. If you squeeze your butt when you push off, all you're going to do is throw yourself into too much lumbar extension. Yeah. It's that at heel strike. And that's when we have that eccentric control. Mm -hmm.